Hello one and all, today we're going to be playing with fire. Hello one and all, welcome to Step Ahead with Ernie Rivera. I am your host Ernie Rivera and today we are talking about F-I-R-E, fire, fire and how not to get burnt with fire. So what does FIRE stand for? FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. Financial Independence Retire Early. And this is an amazing system. This is an amazing philosophy that's been gaining a lot of traction recently with a lot of uh, very knowledgeable YouTubers promoting this, uh, this method of retirement. And uh, what does it stand for? What does it do? How does it do? I'll tell you all of that right now. Uh, first, I'd like to say that for the longest time, for the you know, our in our parents' age and our grandparents' age and our great grandparents' age, people didn't really think about retirement, especially not early. I mean, they thought you know you you worked your job uh, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, and before you know it, you're uh, you're older. Then maybe then maybe then you can get a couple years of retirement left to uh, do whatever you want. That is not the case. the The point of retirement is to enjoy it. And uh, do you have to quit working when you retire? No. No, 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 that's not the point of fire. The the point is that you can do whatever you want with your time. You can start a new business. You can do nothing. You can lie back on a beach. You can make YouTube videos all day. You can do whatever you want because you are financially independent and you are officially retired because you can live off your investments. Live off your investments. That is what we are talking about here today. Real quick, I do want to mention that if you could, please, please, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you get the new videos as soon as they come out. It's really helping me build my channel, and it's much appreciated, so thank you very much. Now, the idea of FIRE is that you have enough money in your bank account, savings account, investments, uh, your whole portfolio, that that basically you can retire and live off of the pure interest and dividends. Now I'm going to break down a little uh, little uh, simple math for you real quick to talk about how that can happen. So it's it's a it's a thing that for for the many decades of the past the S&P 500 the market in general has gone up about 10% a year uh, over the you know on average over 10 years for for many decades now. And the thing is that even though it's going up 10%, does that mean you could just put your money in an index fund or something like that and have it go up 10% every year? No, because you're gonna have up years, down years, up years, down years, but the point is that over the course of about 10 years, you're getting an average return of about 10%. That's, uh, I believe, in count, uh, including dividends. And um, does that mean that you can live off 10% if you average it out? No. And I'll tell you why. There are a couple things. There are a couple things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the, the simple numbers right here. So, so um, you have to account for taxes and you have to account for inflation, which is eating up your money every year, making it worth less and less. So, how much money can you really live on? I've heard some people say three, but I think it's more like 4% that you can live off of your investments each year. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Without without eating away at the principal, you can live off four percent of your investments. The rest gets reinvested back into your investments. And let's talk about that real quick. So hmm, you can live off four percent a year. So that means that your retirement age depends entirely on how much money you have invested and how much money you want to live off of each year. So let's do some simple math, right? Let's say that uh, you want to be able to spend uh, $100,000 a year in retirement. If you want to spend $100,000 a year in retirement, that's going to be 4% of your total investments so that you're not eating away at the principal. So if you want to make $100,000 a year, um, be able to spend without eating away at the principal, you're going to need about $2.5 million invested. So your goal for yourself, for yourself personally, if you wanted to live off $100,000 a year, would be to save up, save up and invest in order to save up greater, uh, $2.5 million so that you have it away, you have it investments, you have it making uh, hopefully about 10% on average a year so that you can live off of 
uh, a year. So that would be a hundred thousand dollars. That is uh, that is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And you don't have to live off of that much. So so let's say let's say you want to live off of uh, eighty thousand dollars a year. If you want to live off of eighty thousand dollars a year, I think you would need about two million invested. Um, they have something called Lean Fire for when you, let's say, you're just trying to get to retirement because you just want to kick back and you uh, you don't need necessarily need to live lavishly. That means, so let's say you want to have $40,000 a year to live on. If you can live on $40,000 a year, if that's your goal, then um, if you want to make $40,000 each year, every year, you need $1 million saved up right now. That is a uh, that is what we call lean fire. Lean fire. Lean fire is like fire. Financial independence. Retire early. But it's uh, but it's uh, a little a little uh, pulled back, just for people more more for people's uh, comfort and dignity more than to retire in lavish luxury. So let's talk about how you're going to get that uh, portfolio built up to the millions so that you can live off of $100,000 a year or uh, whatever you're going to live off of. So uh, how are we going to get there? Well, it's no secret. In the beginning, you're going to have to work. Now, you're going to have to get some sort of job, and hopefully you're going to be leveling up along the way. You're going to be uh, maybe taking a couple classes here or there in order to qualify for higher positions, and, uh, and you're going to be working for a while. Now, again, it depends on how much you're saving up. Some people save up 10% uh, a year. Some people, uh, they can save up to 20% uh, of their of their paychecks, 20%. And some people, like, they are really at it. They are really about this fire movement. So they're saving 50% of everything they make. Um, so they're, they're, living, uh, they're living on, on less means to save up, to invest, so that they can retire in luxury as quickly as possible so they are um, they are saving up their money but they're not just saving it up you know the point is you keep about six months in cash and the rest is meant to go towards investments so you keep uh, six months of expenses in cash just in case of an emergency but the rest goes towards investments and again you're investing in different asset classes so you could be investing in real estate you could be investing in stocks you could be investing in crypto you could be investing in your own businesses you could be investing in a number of things now the safest way to go about it is to get uh, an index fund that mirrors the market so you're you're pretty safe with BOO the, which is the the S&P 500 it uh, goes by ticker symbol BOO so if you're shopping around on your on your brokerage account uh, go for BOO it is not financial advice not you know education purposes only entertainment purposes only mainly uh, but this is um, just something to look into look into it do your own due diligence and and so yeah, every time you're saving up your money, every time you're putting something away, and you should be putting away at least 10% of everything you earn. And if you uh, if you can't save 10%, then maybe you need to do some side hustles. Maybe you need to do an Uber. Maybe you need to do uh, sell some stuff on Etsy. Maybe you need to do a YouTube channel. I don't know. There are any number of uh, ways which you can apply your talents to make a little extra uh, cash on the side. And again, we're also um, ideally taking uh, classes or getting certifications so that we can level up in our own um, in our own jobs, so that we can get paid larger and larger amounts each year. Sometimes they they cap you; they don't want to pay you any more at a certain company. So you might need to take everything you learned at that company, and you might need to start looking for another job and leverage your current skills and uh, and uh, education at another company for a higher paycheck. That is very possible. That is very doable. Again, we're trying to save 10%, but you know what's better than 10%? Save 20%, even 50% if possible. May not be possible, but hey, we all gotta have goals, right? And before we get into this fire, I would say that it's important to have a goal in mind. Think about uh, how much you would like to live on each year. How, Honestly, how much you would really like to live on? How, what feels comfortable to you? What feels, if you wanna go for luxury, go for luxury. What feels luxurious to you? How much are you saving each? How much, how much what is your goal to save up? So again, you want to save um, two, or you want to you want to be able to live off of two hundred thousand dollars a year. That means you need to have five million saved up right now and invested. 
So you are investing in your portfolio. Again, you're investing in real estate ideally because uh, because real, real estate tends to hold its value. You're gonna have up markets, you're gonna have down markets. You, you might need to hold on to your real estate for uh, 10 years or more and put it in uh, a tenant if possible, if, if, that's, uh, if you're investing in real estate. Or another way to go about it is to get a, a I think it's called a REIT, a REIT, which is um, basically like, uh, well, it's, it, it's, it's, it's basically like, um, not a, not an index fund, but it's like a, it's like a fund where you can you can invest in a number of properties by investing. Let's say you want to invest fifty dollars. They'll take that fifty dollars and they'll put it in a number of properties where you own just a fraction of each property, and you're getting paid um, you're getting paid income in return. You're getting paid rents in return as dividends. So that's another way to invest in real estate. And again, um, invest in stocks, individual stocks. But you know. Uh, you know, uh, you really have to know what you're doing, or you really have to be confident, know the product, know the company. If you are investing in individual stocks, it's uh, it's not for uh, if you if you have an aversion to risk. I would not necessarily invest in individual stocks. I would go for the um, the uh, index funds and the ETFs, where they're uh, they're um, taking a lot of a lot of. Uh, different companies, you know, let's say in the S&P 500, they're taking 500 of the market's top companies and they're putting it all in the one fund where you're putting, let's say you invest $50 into the, into the S&P 500, then a little bit of your $50 goes over all these 500 companies. And um, again, you're getting paid money back and you're getting paid back dividends. That is another way to invest your money. And again, um, crypto, crypto is something to look into. I won't talk too much about it right now. But uh, you get the idea, you know, uh, invest your money in a number of different asset classes and uh, and keep it strong. You know, some people say don't put over 20% of your money in any one asset class. Certainly not uh, if you're, if you don't have a high risk tolerance, don't put more than 20% of your money in any one asset class. So diversify a little, uh, do a little of this, a little of that, but always put in your money. A lot of people think it helps to keep it automated. Keep it automated so that uh, once every month or two, you're putting in regular amounts of money. You set it, you forget it. And your money is building money on top of money on top of money. And when you get paid a dividend in return, you uh, you keep investing, reinvesting, reinvesting, reinvesting until you are ready, until you have your couple million dollars. And uh, then you are ready to retire. Uh, then you can do whatever you want. You can keep on working. You can, uh, you can lay on a beach. You can do whatever you want. You can go on vacations. You can invest in your hobbies. You can uh, do any number of things. But remember, try to keep it to four percent. If you're using four percent of your total uh, of your total principal invested, then it's it's less likely that you're gonna eat through any of the principal. So that is the goal today. That is what we're talking about today. We are talking fire the fire movement. And uh, one and all, friends and family, I will ask you again, if this adds something to your day, please click like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. That's helping me defeat that YouTube algorithm. And it's helping me to build my channel. It's helping us grow our portfolios together. And I'm super appreciative. So again, guys, look into fire. It's amazing. It's spectacular. And it is definitely possible to retire early. That is how all the... Uh, all the rich 20 year olds are doing it nowadays on the YouTube, uh, investing in this, investing in that. You know, if uh, if a bunch of 20 year olds can uh, bec become millionaires in a couple years, you know, there's there's not a time limit on it. You can do it in a couple years. It doesn't matter your age. You, you can do it in a couple years. And I don't mean one or two, but you know, 10 or whatever. You can you can do it in a, in a very short amount of time. You can get to that level you want to get to. So put in the work. If it's important to you, you will find a way. That is my message to you today. And it's been amazing one and all. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, love y'all. Take care and peace.